I have news today on some of the big upcoming IPOs, including Snowflake, JFrog, and Palantir. Things were slow as far as new companies going public this week, but that's not going to last. Labor Day has passed us, now the real work begins. Welcome to the Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise channel, where we have evolved to talk about all the companies going public, whether it's by traditional IPO, a SPAC, or a direct listing. As part of that coverage, we have a weekly featured program called IPO This Week, where we talk about every company going public for the upcoming week, as well as all the IPO lockup and notable quiet period expirations. For this week's episode, because we had no traditional IPO starting to trade, and I needed something to talk about, we took a little glance into the near future and looked at some of the biggest names out there in the pipeline, Airbnb, Snowflake, and Palantir. And wow, did that episode do well, becoming the most popular video I've posted to date and bringing in well over a thousand new subscribers in just two days. Whether you're new to the channel or you've been with me for a while, I just want to thank you for joining the community. It's always great for me when someone watches one of my videos and realizes that I'm not a fan of or trying to push you on a particular company, that I'm not making any pie in the sky recommendations or price targets, and yet they still subscribe because they value me just researching and sharing the information in an easy to understand and concise way. And also sprinkling some of my own personal thoughts here and there. So again, thank you for all of your support and the great discussions we've been having in the comments. For today, I knew I would need to talk about some news that came out after I recorded IPO this week. We had updates to two companies with a lot of investor interest setting the pricing expectations for their IPOs, those companies being Snowflake and JFrog. And then we also had Palantir hold their Investor Day livestream and release another amended filing. I'll give you a brief overview of the live stream and what I found interesting and then also share with you how you can watch the replay if you missed it and still want to see it. And probably the thing that you will be most interested in is that I give you some big news on when they plan to start trading. Yes, I'll give you a date right from Palantir, so hang on for that. But first, I'll give you a quick update on the SPAC we talked about going public this week. And that was for Industrial Tech Acquisitions, a blank check company that plans to acquire an industrial or energy focused technology business. The SPAC was priced for its IPO at $10 per unit. They began trading today under the ticker ITACU and they opened and spent the day trading just under that $10 price, settling at $9.97 at close. We'll see how that price goes once the company finds and announces a merger target. Just a quick reminder that I'm not a financial advisor and while this video is meant to be informative, it should not be seen as a recommendation for you to take any action on the companies covered. You should always do your own research or consult with your own financial advisor when making any investment decision. So on to two highly anticipated companies looking to IPO soon. Keep in mind I don't have exact dates, but now that they have announced terms, we're another step closer to them going public. If you have your notification bell turned on, you'll know as soon as I have that information because, well, I'll post it. Another good reason to be subscribed to the channel. So let's start with JFrog. For those of you not familiar with the company, JFrog is another one of the companies looking to go public with tech-heavy credentials. The company is one that sells software tools that help to streamline app development. JFrog was founded in 2008 with the mission to develop an integrated and full-featured system to enable software development and IT operations teams to more quickly and easily develop and deploy new software releases. In their filing, they talk about how they built the world's first universal package repository named JFrog Artifactory to fundamentally transform the way that the software release cycle is managed. They state that their package-based approach to releasing software allows releases to be continuous and software to always be current. From thestreet.com, recent financial data was summarized as JFrog having sharp growth in top-line revenue, increasing gross profit in high but variable gross margin, nearly break-even operating loss, and increasing cash flow from operations. The company is based in Israel and incorporated in California. In their amended S1 filing released this week, JFrog plans to raise $405 million by offering 11.6 million shares at a price range of $33 to $37. At the midpoint of the proposed range, which would be $35, JFrog would command a fully diluted market value of $3.5 billion. The company plans to list on the NASDAQ under the symbol FROG. We'll talk more about the company as it gets closer to the actual IPO. The second company that has set its terms is one we've talked about in a couple of videos on the channel, and that is Snowflake. I am not going to repeat anything from those videos today, so if you've already seen them, you don't have to hear the same things over and over. 
but if you haven't seen them, I will link them in the description if you're looking for more information on the background of the company and some of its recent financial data. This is one of those companies that there is a lot of interest in. So as we get closer to trading, I'll post a comprehensive video on the company that will also include me sharing my own thoughts for the first time on investing in the company. So the latest from the cloud data warehousing company is that they have set the terms for their IPO. Snowflake plans to raise $2.2 billion by offering 28 million shares at a price range of $75 to $85. While price doesn't equal value, how many of you all of a sudden felt that stock may be pricier than you thought it would be? Let me know in the comments what you think about the expected price and if that affects your strategy of buying in. At the midpoint of the proposed range, Snowflake would command a fully diluted market value of $28.2 billion. At pricing, Snowflake would be the largest ever IPO of a software seller, both in terms of proceeds raised and IPO market cap. So that's the pricing. Now here's where it gets really interesting. This is from the amended S1 filing. Immediately subsequent to the closing of this offering and subject to certain conditions of closing as described in the section titled Concurrent Private Placements, each of Salesforce Ventures LLC and Berkshire Hathaway Inc. will purchase $250 million of our Class A common stock from us in a private placement at a price per share equal to the initial public offering price. Based on an assumed initial public offering price of $80 per share, which is the midpoint of the price range set forth on the cover page of this prospectus, each of Salesforce Ventures LLC and Berkshire Hathaway Incorporated would purchase 3,125,000 shares of our Class A common stock. Jumping ahead, in addition, Berkshire Hathaway Inc. has agreed to purchase 4,042,043 shares of our Class A common stock from one of our stockholders in a secondary transaction at a price per share equal to the initial public offering price that will close immediately subsequent to the closing of this offering. So what this means is that the company plans to raise an additional $500 million in concurrent private placements to Salesforce Ventures in Berkshire Hathaway. Yes, the same Berkshire Hathaway that made Warren Buffett a household name and vice versa. And with that secondary transaction, Berkshire will end up with having much more than that $250 million invested from the first transaction. Now Buffett always says to invest in what you know. I'm not sure how much he knows about the cloud and data warehousing, but he knows huge growth when he sees it. This announcement will only make Snowflake more attractive than it already is. Again, I don't have a date yet, but stay tuned to the channel and I'll let you know when I have it. Now let's jump to Palantir and some big news. Today they held their Investor Day presentation on a live stream in which I was able to attend. And on that live stream, they did have one particular piece of information that I was hoping to hear about. And that was some data on what the stock was trading for in the private markets. I'll get to that in a minute. Overall, I have to say that the presentation was what I expected and that they shared a lot of information that was already in the S1 filing and knowing that this obviously was meant to be a promotional event. That meant, of course, that they didn't address some of the more controversial aspects of their upcoming direct listing, such as the corporate governance structure regarding the special Class F shares that we talked about on IPO this week. That wasn't addressed in any detail, as well as the amended filing stating that the company could be a controlled company. Although after looking at it, it almost is a certainty that this will function as a controlled company where public investors will have no legal say in the direction of the company. Remember, they're doing a direct listing versus a traditional IPO and they aren't offering any new shares. They're just letting current private investors and employees with shares to be able to sell them. One thing unique with their direct listing is that they will have lockup shares, which isn't typical for companies going the direct listing route. From the CFO, only 20% of existing shares and options can be traded freely on the first day of trading. Which reminds me, I get a lot of questions on the date of the stock trading, and while most of the time I don't have anything official because these things are very fluid. But I do have something to share with you today. According to their most recently amended S1 filing, Palantir, who will trade under the ticker PLTR, has announced that it will plans to start trading on September 23rd on the New York Stock Exchange. So there's some breaking news for you. If you like that, you know what to do. Back to the share lockups. For the remaining 80% of shares, they will become available on the third business day following the release of fiscal year 2020 earnings. So when this year's earnings come out, we could see some more volatility in the share price when those 80% of shares are finally able to hit the market. If you want more information on lockup expirations, check out a video I did on IPO basics and how I applied them to Albertsons companies, the grocery company that went public this summer. I'll link it for you. As far as the live stream, the information I found most beneficial was to see how the stock had been trading amongst private investors. 
You can see for most of the year, the stock was trading around the $5 mark, but over the last two months, it's trended significantly higher with the volume weighted average price being $7.31 for August. No doubt due to anticipation of the company going public. On the last day of secondary trading, which was on September 1st, the average price was up to $9.17. These numbers are good to know to have a reference of what the stock might be worth, but keep in mind that there will be, almost without a doubt, a premium to that price once it trades publicly for the first time because of all the interest out there. So if you missed the live stream, why might you still want to watch it? Well, if you're still learning about the company, its products, and what they do, it will be helpful in giving a better understanding. There's also a benefit of hearing the performance numbers of the company from people as compared to just reading them from a filing. And by watching a lot of different people of the company, you get a better idea of the culture that is there. If you want to watch a replay of the event, you can see it at vimeo.com backslash palantir. It's just two hours long, and to give you an idea of what's on it, the first 47 minutes are the numbers and information from the company's leadership. From about that 47 minute mark on, and for about the next hour, you hear from people that work for the company. And then the last 15 to 20 minutes, you'll hear from co-founder and CEO, Alex Karp. So if you're on the fence and want to learn more about the company, check it out. Just remember, it's a promotional event, so there's a definite rah-rah factor here. Before it starts to trade, I'll definitely share my own personal thoughts on the pros and cons for investing in the company, so stay tuned for that. Let's wrap it here for now, but don't worry, I'll have more for you soon. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please push that like button, share with your friends, and on any of your social media sites and forums you're on. Anything you can do to help me grow the channel will allow me to justify putting more resources to it. And if you're new to the channel or just an occasional visitor, we'd love to have you join the community. It's totally free. You just got to press that red subscribe button. We'd love to have you on board. Thank you for watching and until next time, have a great day.